All right, it's wall review time. Every month we change the wall. This is actually the non-changing wall. It's my X-Men run. I'm glad that, well not my run, but my big X-Men books. I'm really glad to see 101 up there. That's been taking off like crazy. If you'll notice, the cover of each previous one goes as far as the M on the next issue for the most part because I'm anal like that. Then there's the Bionicles row. Now I haven't gotten the new Lego uh, Star Wars Bionicles recently, but I see Sunflower the Blurred is building all these Lego um, Star Wars like heads and helmets, which is crazy. And then there's my Miss Marvel row, each and every one signed by G. Willie Wilson, except for that one on the end. And then there is the actual wall that I stare at when I'm on my computer. And boom, there's the new addition right there. All right, now let's go look at the changing. Now here's the two shelves that are getting changed. Last um, month, this was the homage to, I think it was X-Men 134, where Colossus is leaving the suitcase. I put all the homages to that up. Uh, now it's all my X-Men kissing covers. Except for that astonishing one with Colossus and Kitty. That's just similar theme. All the way across to that classic X-Men there. And then, sorry about the glare. I should turn the light off. My top hip-hop covers down here. So these two shelves are what's going to change. All right. So now we've replaced the shelf. We have Darth Vader number three from Kieran Gillen and Salvador La Roca. That is the first appearance of Dr. Aphra. On the other side of that is a second printing. And then Star Wars Heir to the Empire number one. I had the new stand, but it was so chipped up it wasn't worth keeping. Um, first appearance of Mara Jade. Clone Wars number one, first appearance of Ahsoka. Kanan number one, cameo of, arguably cameo, first appearance argument of Sabine. And... Hera and Zeb and Chopper, definitely first appearance, speaking of Kanan and um, Ezra, and that is a Sabine Ahsoka cover done by God Tank. Uh, first appearance of, is it Ken Fisha? Ken Fisha, I can't remember. Uh, not first appearance and not the origin of Boba Fett and not Boba Fett on there. That is another bounty hunter, another Mandalorian, not even bounty hunter, another Mandalorian. So that's 67, that's the first appearance appearance and mention of Mandalorians. Um, yeah, the first mention, obviously, when Boba Fett appeared in, uh, what is it, 42, that's the first appearance of Mandalorian. Anyway, I digress. Star Wars Kanan number six, that is definitely full speaking parts for Sabine, Hera, Zeb, and Chopper. Uh, this is a beautiful Star Wars 67 that I got from Lady Fantastic. Shout out Lady Fantastic. That's a variant, just a great Princess Leia cover. Um, Star Wars Bounty Hunters Aura Singh. Just love that cover. Don't know much about the character, but just thought she looked really cool. Um, you know, Sith and bad people or bounty hunters with no hair in Star Wars. That does it for me. Uh, this is from Forces of Destiny. That is um, Forces of Destiny, a team up between um, Padme and Ahsoka. This is the animation cell variant. Uh, these are pretty popular and pretty pricey. I had no idea. And um, they do one for Hera and for Princess Leia that I have as well. And then you've got this Star Wars from the 2020, or did it come out in 2019? I don't know, the most recent series that's up to issue six now. Uh, my wife did that Baby Yoda for me. And get some of this glare off. Adi Granov on, um, I think that's Princess Leia 50, I'm not positive. But that's like fighter pilot Princess Leia. And that story has not fully been told yet. And that, that's just amazing to me. And then Mace Windu, uh, the Star Wars Jedi one-shot. That has the first appearance of Asajj Ventress. I just got that the other day. And even though it's up on the wall, I'm going to take it down and read it tonight. Shh. And uh, let me just show you what did not make the cut uh, for no particular reason. You've got Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 48. This is not the first appearance of Demigol. But I just think this is one of the greatest covers ever. I don't know why that's not up there. Probably just because it was in the bottom of the pile. And I've shown this one off before. Darth Maul, Son of Dathomir, number one. I would love to get the variants to that. This is a really great storyline. This Star Wars 
you know, run from Jason Aaron was just killer. And in issue seven here, um, this is like about six or seven, maybe 10 years after New Hope, a few years before, um, sorry, I didn't mean to say New Hope, 10 years after Revenge of the Sith, maybe eight years before New Hope, um, you know, and a few years before Rogue One as well. This is Ben Kenobi, not yet old grizzled Ben, but middle-aged Ben, <laughs> and um, he's on Tatooine, and he's trying to look over and defend Luke, and Uncle Owen is like, F off and get out of here, we don't need your help in your Jedi ways, you ruined everything, stay away from my family. So it's a really nice introspective story on Ben. Um, always liked this wizard half in this Boba Fett issue, apparently this is starting to heat up, or started to heat up a while ago. Uh, it does come with the COA, of course it does, of course it does, of course it does. Age of Republic Special, this book is getting a little bit of notice. Um, I don't think it's ever going to be a big book. I just love the Saja Ventress on the cover. This is the first appearance of Ahsoka Tana in um, canon. right? So obviously the uh, Dark Horse books are considered expanded universe. Um, this is canon, and this is the first Ahsoka Tana in canon. And it, there's a variant to this that has a Saja Ventress on that I really need to get. Moving on, I don't know why this cover does not get more love. I don't know why this cover isn't up there with Tech 880. Um, this cover is amazing. Let's look a little bit closer at this cover. All right, Imperial Star Destroyers, X-Wing Fighters, TIE Fighters, Stars. Oh, that, that gun is so like Star Wars New Hope era. Um, I just think this is amazing and really underappreciated and undervalued. Um, this is the second printing. The first printing is in blue. I think the second printing is even a little bit better. First appearance of IG-88. Um, he does have a cameo in 42 with the rest of the bounty hunters, but he's unnamed and unspoken in that. Poe Dameron. Second printing of number one. This is a really good story. Like um, It really tied into Force Awakens, and I just think and Phil Noto on the covers of this was also amazing. I just think it didn't catch because there was a lot of backlash against Poe and Finn, not necessarily for Rey. Uh, I don't even want to say backlash. I just don't think they took hold the way we wanted them to. Shout out to Jay Blitz for this uh, John Tyler Christopher variant, a negative space variant. I don't love all of his stuff, but when I do love it, I want it. So definitely, and shout out to... Uh, Flicks and Comics, JoJo for that one. Let's see what else we got. Uh, I don't know much about Shakti at all, and I should learn about Shakti by reading this. Uh, this isn't the same kind of one-shot series as that um, Mace Windu, but uh, this is Shakti, who looks really, really cool there. About five years ago, Dark Horse did this um, series called The Star Wars, and it was basically a retelling of... Uh, not retelling, it was a story based on the original uh, script that George Lucas had written for Star Wars. Um, so it has like stuff you may have heard of before. It's Lady, it says it's Luke Scar Starkiller, not Luke Skywalker, and other little changes like that. Um, I didn't love it, but I love this variant cover to number zero. I just thought that was really, really well done, and I found that really cheap at a half price. And then finally is the blank, no, um, finally is one that I'm, I'm also in love with, but I'm also hugely specking on this book. I got about five copies. So this is Star Wars 21. This is a beautiful David Aha cover. I mean, that's just, that's just gorgeous. Um, Jorge Molina did the interiors, but David Aha did the, uh, the cover. I'm like 99% sure. No, I'm 100% sure of that. And this is just a great story about Scar Squadron, who are, like, chasing Luke and the gang. They are um, a, a special squadron of stormtroopers who kind of get to do their own thing. They're not clones, or at least if they are clones, there's something wrong with them that they don't act like all the other stormtroopers. Which ties right into the spec on this. The spec is that Scar Squadron is a later iteration of the Bad Batch. And the Bad Batch are the clones from Clone Wars who featured in the last season, and they're a little bit off. Um, they aren't clones. They think for themselves more. They're more individualistic, and they all have something wrong with their, their wiring, I guess. 
All right, so the spec is that the Bad Batch morphs into Scar Squadron. And it's already been announced that there will be a Bad Batch TV show. If that is the case, this might be a book to get. And if you can get this book for 2 or $3, do so, because it's not a waste, even if it never comes into something big. This is worth 2 or $3 just to have this, man. All right, so that's the change to my room, plus some bonus Star Wars books. I will see you next month for this series called Changing the Books in My Room. I already changed this one up top. This was like some of my big books, but I changed it to a little Champions theme. There's first appearance of Viv Vision, first appearance of Amadeus Cho, first appearance of Gwenpool, who showed up in Champions Edition 5. I really wasn't a fan of that, but what else? There's the first cover appearance of Gwenpool. Thank you, Jeff Silversmith. There's the first Yuri Williams. There's the variant to the first um, Nova, uh, Stan Alexander Nova. There's Captain Marvel 14, I believe. That is the first cameo, retconned cameo of Kamala. Um, and then there's the first Miles, and there's the first full appearance of Kamala. So those are the uh, the change shelves.